Hi guys, Sherry here from No Fucks Giving Crew. How's it going? Okay, so this is going to be a reading for the 21st until the 29th of May. So I'm going to be using the John Holland deck for the Twin Flame reading. And then I will be using my deck for clarification. So I've already shuffled these pretty good. Yeah, sorry about the little delay bringing you uh, this reading. My apologies. Really needed to get that painting off, out of my system. Okay. So, beginning with the feminine. Her recent past position. Patience. So, this is temperance. For me, this is the ultimate union card. So, it's the coming together of the souls. Winding of the souls. Uh, you know, come together dualities. But... It, it also represents patience as well. So planting the seed and nurturing it so that it grows into, you know, this beautiful flower. Ten of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, and Temperance again. Nice. So we got a ten here, which reduces to one, and then the Ace. So we got an eleven, and then Temperance. So Temperance, Temperance, eleven. Uh, so this is Screaming Union. Uh, so the Ten of Pentacles represents, um, you know, that long-term vision, that long-term goal of um, attaining, you know, abundance and to a point where you don't have to worry about money anymore. So you can enjoy the finer things in life and, you know, just have people and friends and family around you and uh, just enjoy life, not have to worry about material needs anymore. Um, so the Ace of Swords talks about um, success and victory, uh, but it also talks about grounding an idea into the 3D. So it's making a decision and being unwavering. Um, the Ace of Swords also represents cutting away barriers and restrictions. Okay, so um, what I see here with this is that, you know, in the recent past, the feminine has felt this deep connection um, with the masculine and she can see her long-term vision her goals are being manifested so it's like there is this decision to to make this um, you know um, this life grounded into the 3d so nice okay so for the masculine side disruption the tower so this is a very sudden energy. It comes in like a bolt of lightning. And it changes your life forever. So it tears down all the, um, you know, false um, things that you've been identifying with in the 3D world. So, um, you know, faulty foundations are meant to come down. Um, just any attachments that you've been holding on to um, were meant to come down as well. Eight of Cups. Four of Wands. And the Fool card, nice. So um, the Eight of Cups talks about a pilgrimage. So the tower came in, um, you know, tore down this uh, house of cars that was built on a lie. Um, and then from that, the masculine rose and walked away from this negative environment. So Eight of Cups, a pilgrimage, but it's a movement away from an emotionally abusive situation. And what is he walking towards? He's walking towards the Four of Wands. So this is uh, the Twin Flame Union card. Uh, so this is that uh, spiritual bond and then um, taking it a step le uh, higher and actually, you know, um, coming into this space of love and unity between the two twin flames. So it could represent engagement, marriage, buying a home or property, that kind of thing. It's an arrival, but yet you have this entire life um, spread out before you. And then um, the full card is very similar to this, but it's the beginning. So it's taking a leap of faith, um, starting from zero and brand new life, um, you know, seeing your future through a child's eyes, innocence. So destruction, he rose um, went on a journey of self-discovery uh, and also to, you know, connect with, um, or in, he's on that search for his twin flame. 
and he's starting from zero. So that's beautiful card com combination. Okay, so for the present position for the feminine awareness, the magician, master manifester. Uh, so the magician is someone who has a direct connection to source. So, you know, the crown chakra is open here. And um, so this is someone who realizes they can create the life that they desire um, just by thinking about it, just by wanting it. They can create that world. So they're bringing, you know, their thoughts are being materialized into the 3D world. So you're know, being recognized as being very powerful in creating the real reality that you desire. Ace of Wands, Five of Wands, and the Ten of Wands, all wandy en energy. So again, with the uh, actually we got three ones here. So the Ace, the One, and then the Ten of Wands, which reduces to one. Um, so the Ace of Wands is the go light, go time. So it's a brand new life. Um, the Ace of Wands is something that the a fool would be holding in his hand as he takes that leap of faith. Uh, so it's starting from zero. So you're creating this reality, this new life for yourself that is based on spiritual, uh, your spirituality um, and connection to source. So again, this is a direct connection. The Ace of Wands is a direct connection to source. Uh, it is a Kundalini awakening. So you know, that energy is being awakened in your body and you move it through um, your chakras until it reaches the crown chakra and then that's your connection to source. That's how you can download information, become inspired. Uh, so this is all about creativity and being inspired um, um, and seeing this, you know, possibility of a different life spread out before you. So, yeah, brand new beginning. The Five of Wands represents obstacles and challenges. So this card is always meant to help you grow. Uh, so the challenge, you know, could be a disagreeing opinion or just somebody is in your environment that is um, challenging you. So a minor obstacle that needs to be overcome. Uh, the Ten of Wands represents the machine, the matrix. Uh, it is being caught in the machine day after day, working, toiling away, um, and, you know, going to bed and then doing it again. So a repeated cycle over and over again. So for the feminine, she is awake. She doesn't want to live her life like this, you know, where every moment seems to be a challenge and uh, she's exhausted all the time. So she's creating a new life for herself. And she's willing to sacrifice and overcome any obstacles that are in her way. So the masculine present position, eight of swords trapped in fear. So I, I like how there's like, you know, masculine energy, energy being represented on your side there, masculine. So, you know, it's a very powerful message saying that this is, this card is directly related to how you're feeling. Um, so currently you feel trapped. You feel that, um, you know, you, you can't move forward. It's an oppressive energy coming from the outside, so you're being held back. Uh, so it's a, you know, even though it's an oppressive energy from someone else, you're, you're choosing to believe that you're trapped. So it's a self-imposed prison of the mind. You choose to believe those stories. Five of Swords, Six of Cups, and the World Card. So the Five of Swords is conflict and defeat. So it's basically somebody pointing the finger at you saying, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. And, you know, it's an energy of getting tired of, of you know, having to deal with that. So it's a movement away from negativity. So, you know, somebody in your environment is pointing the finger, making you feel like shit, pretty much. But you are choosing to believe that. Uh, the Six of Cups represents reunion. So it's somebody from the past coming back, somebody from your childhood. Um, so somebody that represents pure, innocent uh, love. So you are reminiscing, reminiscing um, about, you know, this connection that you have with somebody. So it could either be somebody from your childhood or it could be somebody from a previous life, but it's someone that you've known deeply. So as you're, you know, sitting in this this darkness, you are thinking about, um, you know, this connection that you have with your 
feminine and your desire to be with her. Um, the world card represents the final piece of the puzzle being laid. So it's the end of a massive cycle from 20 years up to a lifetime. Um, so this, you feel, is your key to freedom, this relationship, this bond that you have. Um, now, whoop. now as I see, I see a little warning here that goes with it. Okay, so as you're in this state of mind, this mental prison, you're you're thinking about someone that you desire, that you love, that will, that represents that key to to freeing you. But in reality, no one can free you from this. Um, you know, you need to leave that state of mind on your own and be able to stand. Um, you know, on your own, have a life, um, and not do it because that you know you want a relationship with somebody. You're doing it for yourself. You're, you know, you need to heal yourself first. Be in a, uh, you know, have mental clarity, and understand your own truth um, before you can even pursue a relationship um, that would you know entail your twin flame. So. Um, you know, don't release yourself from that mental prison because you want to be in a relationship with somebody else. You free yourself because you want to be in a relationship with you. You feel locked out of a union with your twin flame, but, um, you know, you're choosing to believe that. You always have a 5D connection with your twin no matter what. Um, so, you know, take this time to clear your energy field. Um, you know... Uh, you choose not to believe those stories, those lies that are being told about you. Okay, you are this beautiful, innocent, free spirit. Um, and uh, so it seems to me like you're coming to the end of this cycle, this, uh, you know, um, this 20-year cycle. So again, this is going through all of the stages of awakening. Um, it's going through the fire many, many times and finally reaching that plot that you know, that climax, that end, um, and beginning a new life. So after this completion card comes the full card once again. So it's a new life. And so um, near future for the feminine. Positive movement forward. Very nice. So she, like, planted a seed, and she, she nurtured it and helped it grow. Then she imagined another life you know, and um, you are in this state of manifestation, and as a result, you're going to have harvest, abundance coming towards you. Um, the Eight of Pentacles represents doing a lot of work in the 3D world, and so building up an, a wealth for yourself, and then feeling successful and continuing to grow that Ten of Pentacles in your future. So you are working diligently. Okay, so you're moving towards your destiny, towards the sun, and you feel accomplished, and Spirit is recognizing you for that work. Nice. The Knight of Wands. Wow. 11, 11, Twin Flame, Calling Card, and the Moon. So, the Knight of Wands. This is a, an explosive energy. It's a shot out of the gate towards your destiny. So, not only are you, you know, emotionally grounded, see how... Um, you know, this boat is in water, you know, floating on the water. So it's like you're skimming across the surf surface of your emotions, but you are still um, surrounded by emotions. So this is emotionally charging you to move forward. Um, and then the pinnacle energy is grounding. So um, it's earth energy, right? So it's manifesting in the, in the 3D. So you are feeling um, emotionally charged to move forward. Um, but also you are on fire. So you're riding this fiery horse of passion towards your future, towards your destiny. Um, so this means um, you're excited um, about your life. And uh, what are you excited about? And why? It's because of this twin flame connection. Um, so in the near future, you are going to feel this major grounding energy, an explosion of excitement. And it's because of this connection that you have with your twin flame. Um, now, we have the, the moon card. Now, this could represent feminine energy, whereas the sun is masculine. Um, but it could also represent facing your shadow side, your ass, your, you know, the, 
your shadow aspect. So um, there may be a situation where you need to move through this darkness, uh, uh, this uh, veil of illusion, of fear, in order to truly, um, you know, reach that point of union with your masculine. So, um, yeah, I don't see it as a big deal. I just see it as a bit of confusion um, related to your final destination, but ultimately you're making progress. You know what you, you desire. So this card here is really kind of confusing me, so I'm going to pull a clarification for that. You ladies always have a complex reading. Okay, so I'm going to use the Osho. Nice, the Two of Cups. So, um, you know, this in every other deck it talks about spiritual union. So recognizing your twin flame and, and you know, having that heart chakra open which activates the third eye and the crown chakra. So um, I pulled that card, the Two of Cups for the moon. So let me just pull out the description in the Osho book and I'll read that to you. Okay, so friendliness. First, um, meditate. Be blissful. Then much love will happen of its own accord. Then being with others is beautiful, and being alone is also beautiful. Then it is simple, too. You don't depend on others. You don't make others depend on you. Then it is always friendship, a friendliness. It never becomes a relationship. It is always relatedness. You relate, but you don't create marriage. Marriage is out of fear. Relatedness is out of love. You relate. As long as things are moving beautifully, you share. If you see that moment has come to depart because your paths uh, separate at this crossroads, you say goodbye with gratitude for all that the other has been to you, for all the joys and all the pleasures and all the beautiful moments that you have shared with the other. With no misery, with no pain, you simply separate. That's beautiful. So I'm seeing here, you know, this, this work, this um, effort that you're putting into this connection um, and manifesting that, the, that dr dream that you desire, okay, in the future, this connection with your, your masculine. Um, but you're not, you're not working towards it to have that. You are... You understand that there's a disconnect, that you don't own your masculine, um, that you are in partnership with them. So, you know, I, I say it over and over again, the, the reason for a twin flame connection um, is not union. It's about awakening, rising to higher and higher levels of consciousness. So that's what this Two of Cups represents, being you know, you know, lo feeling love for another, but not wanting to possess them, not wanting to control them. And that's kind of what I was getting at with th this sequence of cards as well. You know, releasing yourself from that mental state because, you know, it's an outside force that is controlling you, okay? So if you get out of this situation and then move into another situation that is very similar, you're giving up your power. You're giving up a piece of yourself uh, to be in a relationship. And that's that's how this connection with your twin flame is completely different than any other relationship that you're in. There's no needing. There's no wanting. Okay, there's no ownership or attachment. It is just freedom, free love. Um, so that still doesn't, un you know, doesn't answer why this moon is here. Um... So maybe it's a warning to the feminine, you know, to try and to control your um, shadow aspect. Uh, the shadow aspect, Carl Jung explains it as this dark side to yourself, the side that you keep hidden from everybody else. So on the, the surface, you know, you, you're, you're bright, cheery, and happy, 
and then you go home and then you take out your frustrations on your um, you know on a person on, on uh, the internet or your family member or something do you know what you you, pres you have two different sides of your personality uh, so uh, this card represents facing that fear like um, that personality only arises when you're uh, when you're feeling fear so um, face that your fears face your shadow aspect and move through that um, don't possess anybody um, this is uh, a free love hope that makes sense okay so near future for the masculine nice ace of pentacles that's beautiful <laughs> an incredible progression wow so here we have that destruction right you know you can imagine this uh, foundation came crumbling down and there's this rubble okay but it's meant for something new to be built upon it and here we have um, the twin flames coming together to plant the seed and um, you know build this beautiful life together to eventually create this ten of pentacles and as a long term so um, he frees himself from this prison and near future you guys come together and imagine this beautiful future uh, in the 3d and you start um, growing the sea together germinating it together so the destiny card awesome oh my god two cups again and the ten of swords very reflective of this energy over here for sure um, so the wheel of fortune is destiny destiny is knocking on your door so again it represents a completion of a cycle whereas this is 20 years this represents 5 to 10 uh, so there's significant changes occurring okay so this is uh, you know like the clockwork universe um, where destiny just continues to play out um, cause and effect but you don't have any control over your destiny it just you know moves along at the steady pace and then arrives at your door one day <laughs> okay so um, there is no control over destiny you just need to sit back and relax and enjoy the ride okay um, so this also represents good luck and good fortune so what goes around comes around so there's this beautiful energy coming towards you masculine the two of cups is spiritual union so it's reflected energy both got the two of cups so again it's a union that isn't controlling it is a, a marriage but a marriage of the souls um, it isn't meant to constrict or own so um, yeah this beautiful abundance this new life is coming towards you so the ten of swords again represents an ending but we you know the ten um, rolls back to one and then this wheel of fortune is also a ten so we got two ones spiritual union in the middle with the ace of pentacles so ten of swords is the ending of this so it's literally the key that is that unlocks the door it is cutting away those negative thoughts negative people negative situations the illusion the darkness uh, and beginning this new life together so this energy is reflective of the moon um, so they're kind of like both dark night of the soul energy so it's facing your fears and then ending it so over here we got you walking through the veil of darkness uh, but over here we have this cutting away the darkness okay final come for the feminine nice ace of swords again that's crazy so a lot of ones in the reading here a lot of aces um, aces represent beginnings so the ace of swords it's a double card a repeated card you got the ace of swords um, in your recent past so again it represents triumph and victory here in this card we have a feminine being represented so it's like she exposed herself to the masculine she's naked um, she comes with her truth 
it, you know, the Ace of Swords is communication as well. So she spoke her truth. She knows her truth. She's she's uh, exposed and raw. Um, and same thing in this card too. You know, it's another feminine uh, being represented here, an angel, and she's she's naked, exposed. Um, but in this card, we have a masculine hand coming through, uh, cutting away the darkness, the barriers. So it's a thrust forward also with an idea, though. It's clarity of thought, making a decision. Four of Swords, Justice, and the Seven of Wands. So as a final outcome, feminine, a decision will be made. Okay, that requires you to um, retreat. Uh, this card, Four of Swords, is um, retreating from noise in order to still the mind, find peace and harmony within yourself in order to make a decision and ground an idea into the reality. Uh, the Justice card is karma, similar to the Wheel of Fortune, but um, this is this, you know, uh, uh, the scales of, uh, the cosmic scales uh, need to be balanced out. So if there's, um, you know, if too much energy is being pulled on to one side, eventually the universe is going to balance itself out in some way. Okay, so if you're being greedy, um, you know, or negative, then karma is going to return with negative, greedy um, crap right back at you. Okay, so, you know, this card represents good karma coming back to you. Um, but really, because, you know, the justice card is at the center, um, it means that you need to balance yourself, okay? Uh, find strength, find mental clarity in order to speak your truth. Um, but then again, you know, this is a masculine hand. This is a masculine sitting on the rocks. Um, justice is the feminine energy. And then we've got a masculine here. So, you know, maybe you're providing this balance that is needed for the masculine maybe you are holding the sword of truth in your hand um you know because the justice is justice truth truth and justice right so you're maybe providing this clarity for the masculine as he meditates on his own to find clarity i don't know um the seven of wands is finding power within yourself and feeling um strong so it's speaking up speaking out knowing your core values and belief and expressing those values so again we got this expression that needs to be done or made um but it, you know on the other side we got this solitude this silence stillness um so there's a definite ba balance between the two you know one part of you wants to speak out um Whereas the other side, you know, is in this state of peace. So I think overall, you're being represented as being balanced. I'm not seeing this as anything that you really need to change feminine. Um, you know, just be at peace with yourself and everything will work out just the way it's supposed to. Okay. Okay. So final outcome for the masculine intuition the high priestess um so i like to see this as the divine feminine showing up in her 5d form offering him support and guidance as he moves through his journey um but at the same time this could also represent the masculine getting in touch with his intuition his psychic ability his um you know getting in touch with his higher self Oh, wow, two chakra cards came out. So we got the crown chakra and the base chakra. So this is the highest chakra, number seven, and then this is one. And the queen of pentacles. So the crown chakra, you know, the, the high priestess is more, she goes within. She uses her third eye. Um, she uh, connects with the subconscious. Um the crown chakra is the super conscious that's you know source in the collective whereas the third eye is that intuition that inner knowing so it's going within and um seeking wisdom and knowledge within yourself based on all the things that you've learned through you know the past and growing up and all that collection of information that you've stored in the subconscious mind so she is able to access that subconscious information 
and you use it to guide her. Okay, so the crown chakra is again that connection to source. So it's a little higher level of a connection. Uh, this is you know tapping into the Kashuk records. This is tapping into something um, that isn't your own information that you've you know um, that you've acquired on your own. This is something entirely different. So this is inspiration, very much like the Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands represents the connection from your crown chakra to source. So this is the actual crown chakra, very activated here. So the masculine is really going to be coming into his intuition, um, listening to his higher self, but also, um, you know, using his connection with um, all, with the collective. You know, his his consciousness is going to be risen. Um, and as a result, there's a sense of a grounding energy that comes with it, a sense of safety. I like to see this base chakra as the, the Ace of Pentacles because it's both earthy kind of um, grounded energy. So it's like a seed being planted, very similar. So it's like, um, you know, that seed is planted firmly and it's unwavering. There's this base, this solid foundation to grow from. And the solid foundation is is um, based on spirituality, okay? There's, uh, you know, we got the two ends of the spectrum here. And everything in between is assumed the way I'm seeing it. Do you know what I mean? It's like uh, this perfect harmony and connection that the masculine has with the, the feminine is being represented here. Um, the high priestess, again, it's, it's the, the feminine form um, whereas the Hierophant is the High Priest, which is more of a masculine energy. So we got a feminine here and a feminine here. Um, the Queen of Pentacles is, again, Earth energy. Um, so there's a sense of him wanting to be with her in the 3D. And, you know, taking steps, using his intuition to guide him towards her. Uh, so the Queen of Pentacles, um, she's someone who is independent, um, but she doesn't place a lot of value on the material world. But it, you know, she, it more has to do with the fact that she's strong, independent, motherly type of woman. Um, but she doesn't need to rely on him, anybody else. So there's, you know, gives him that feeling of safety and security because he doesn't have to worry about looking after anybody else. He's not attracted to her because of what she can offer him. Um, she's, he's attracted to her because of this spiritual connection, this 5D connection. Um, that he shares so it's again it's about awakening to raising your conscious level to higher and higher um, vibrations it's the whole point of spiritual uh, the twin flame connection okay so what is the feminine bringing into the union nice the Sun beautiful so even though she's dealing with her own demons um, she's bringing this beautiful light um, to the union. So she's illuminated. She's the sun. Or she's reflecting back the masculine energy. She sees the masculine um, as the sun. And, uh, you know, it's, it's also the law of attraction as well. Like attracts like. Um, so if you put out positive energy, that positive energy is going to be reflected back to you. So this is the best major arcana to get. Um, it represents every positive emotion that you could think of, but it also represents a return to innocence, very similar to the Fool card, very similar to the um, the Six of Cups here. So it is a completion of a cycle as well, but it also represents a brand new beginning. Star card. Seven of Swords and the Nine of Cups. Holy moly. Okay, so the Star card is Wish Granted, and then we got another Wish Granted with the Nine of Cups. So the Star card, you wish upon a star, your, your, your wishes are coming true. But this also comes after a very difficult period of time. Okay, so, you know, it's going through the dark night of the soul and, uh, and rising on the other side as a phoenix. 
Um, so this is Spirit saying that you've been through the worst already and not to worry. Now is the time for rest, rejuvenation. So you're bringing this light and this healing energy to the union. Seven of Swords represents deception. So it's looking over your shoulder to to see if somebody is going to hurt you. So, you know, there's a, this energy of not knowing whether or not you can trust the masculine completely, whether or not, you know, he's going to... Um, take off again or what have you do you know what I mean but again there's that energy of need and want if you attach yourself to somebody and they leave then you know you're going to be left um, feeling less than you are so non-attachment is the key um, that's what draws the positive energy towards you okay not locking somebody in um, to a relationship imprisoning them in marriage, you know what I mean? And this is uh, purity. This is pure love, uh, unconditional love. So be careful of this energy. I think it's just a warning, okay? And then the Nine of Cups, again, wish granted card, uh, but this is emotional abundance. This is, um, you know, arriving at that point in your life where you're doing the things that make you happy. So you're reflecting this beauty back towards the masculine. This, um, abundance of love, this happiness, this excitement, this innocence, um, and just all around good feels. But again, be careful that Seven of Swords. What is the masculine bringing? Nice. Seven of um, Wands. So again, you know, uh, it's the same card here. Finding strength, power, courage in order to to do the things that you want to do the seven of wands or so the wands energy is spirituality so it has to do with your higher calling so you feel um strong you feel like you're on uh, the right path um you're empowered you know your core values and beliefs and you're 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 expressing them so you're you're bringing strength to the union six of wands eight of wands and nine of pentacles so six of wands is success and victory it is um, illumination um, it is feeling like you're on the right path and people are proud of you uh, they see you as an example so you're a rock star you can hear the crowd cheering <laughs> so the eight of wands is my communication card so it could represent you know you wanting to communicate with the feminine express yourself um, but it also represents Cupid's arrows and it also represents reaching for the stars, reaching for your highest dreams, your highest goals, um, your desires, and then having that energy come back to you. So it's, it's the law of attraction, put out, get back. The nine of pentacles represents independence, freedom, uh, financial freedom. So again, it's an arrival card, nine, very uh, very reflective of the the nine of cups over here so it's getting to that point where you can enjoy uh, the finer things in life so going to restaurants very similar to this but this is emotional okay whereas this is 3d so you know you go to a restaurant you listen to music and it makes you happy and excited you can hear people laughing um, but in this situation you're going to a restaurant in order to enjoy the quality of food and the environment and that kind of thing so you're treating yourself um, but this also represents um, um, ripeness. So the fruit is ready to drop from the tree. So this is harvest. This comes after the eight of pentacles. So nine of pentacles is that harvest. You know, all that work is finally paying off. Um, so, wow, that's beautiful energy. Okay, so the foundation, nice. Love begins. Awesome. Again, you know, the, the two uh, halves coming together to create something, a new life. So Ace of Cups represents brand new beginning of love, okay? So it's, um, this card only shows up when you're ready to open up your heart unconditionally to love and let it pour in. So you've um, let go of the past, you know, you've forgiven yourself, forgiven others, um, and you're just that open vessel for love. And I'm not going to pull any further cards for that. It's perfect. Crowning energy. Nice. Again, the reaching out, coming together. Uh, so the three of wands, 
uh, represents making a decision in the past that wasn't based on fear. It was based on your higher calling, what you want to do, and taking that step forward um, to this new life. Um, where's that Ace of Wands? The Ace of Wands is that spark, that passion, that new beginning. Um, where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Ah! So the Ace of Wands is that spark, that beginning. And um, the Two of Wands represents uh, taking that step. Oh, my God. Yeah, so it represents actually taking that step forward, making that decision to take that step forward. Uh, whereas the Three of Wands is waiting. Um, but in this John Holland deck, it represents partnerships. So there's an alliance being formed between the two of you. So you're reaching out towards each other. And the wand energy is spirituality, so it has to do with the spiritual connection. So partnerships coming together, reaching out as one. So I'm not going to pull any additional cards for that either. Okay, so heart-centered energy. No way! Oh my god. Spiritual Union, Two of Cups. So that's the third time this, this card has showed up in the reading. Spiritual Union, right at the heart of the reading. Oh my freaking god. So, you know, the heart chakra is open. If this doesn't scream Union, I don't know what combination would. So, uh, heart chakra activated, crown chakra, third eye love, abound, spirituality, um, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to look at the bottom of the deck for the overall energy, two of wands, so, you know, this is that progression, we got this new start, uh, the two of wands is making that decision, and the three of wands is coming together, so, um, it's a waiting game, it's, you know, waiting for universe to put everything into place so that the two of you can finally come together so there's this understanding between the two of you that um, you're on this soul mission together and in time you will um, you know finally come together but there's a there's this waiting period that needs to occur but there's no stress involved in waiting. It's just a peaceful, restful state. Okay, so I'm going to pull two cards from... Oh, one minute. I have to grab them. Okay, so this is um, Mist and Mermaids. So I'm going to pull two cards from the from this deck for a message from the universe. So, Feminine first. Hamadryad Lake. Did I get this the last time? And Tiger Lily. Tiger Nautilus. So, 32. Okay. Hamadryad Lake. The lake, she looks alluring home to fairy folk and frogs, yet beneath the placid glass lies an enchantress in the bog. That's kind of what I was saying, uh, this energy of sliding across, you know, your emotions. You're kind of above your emotions. Um, so she drinks her fill of innocence and sups upon your soul, withering your sense of self until her bowl, bowels are full. A vulnerable nymph rests herself beside a mystical lake. It is a beautiful, magical place she finds herself drawn into a false sense of security, not knowing of the deception waiting for her below the surface. So deception and enchantment. The, a female with bad design will seek to lead you astray when you are at your most vulnerable. She may be enchanting, but do not allow her to lure you down an improper path. Though you may feel defenseless, know that as long as you stay true to yourself, you will not be led astray. Keep your wits about you. The nephrous female in question may not be a stranger. She may be someone you already know whose goals are at odds with your own. Whether she is trusted 
colleague or a long-time acquaintance or a dazzling new friend, do not be deceived by the glamour of what she proposes. If a situation sounds too good to be true, trust your gut instinct. It is a deception. So what I'm feeling here is, you know, it's kind of connected to this moon card and the seven of swords. Uh, the feminine is questioning whether this is a reality or just an illusion. And so um, I feel almost like she's closing herself off to it. Uh, but don't. <laughs> okay? Face your fears. Face your shadow aspect. Um, look deep beneath the surface. What is it that is stopping you from fully moving forward? So it's different for everybody. So trust. Okay? For um, the tiger lily... Tiger Lily, Tiger Nautilus. O oh, Tiger Lily, my goddess, my grace, a vision like you stops a soul in its place. Such queenly compassion, such po posture and poise. Let me know in an instant you are unlike the boys, so supple, symmetrical, shapely and smooth. Such balance and ease in the way that you move. Your smile is of mercy, your manner of tact. Your beauty is apparent in each tender act. What love and kind charity shines on your face, O oh, tiger lily, my goddess, my grace. A graceful young woman back, um, bedet, bedecked by bright tiger lilies tenderly holds a shell of a tiger nautilus close to her bosom. Her choice of adornment is reflected of her feminine beauty and elegant style. So the me message is embrace your femininity. The feminine power is a radiance that shines from women and girls who are securely anchored within their own bodies and souls. Full of tenderness, love and beauty and grace, the feminine power is soft yet strong. Now is the time to, be, to welcome this power. It is your right to be beautiful inside and out. Awaken the queen inside you and let her blossom. Not a woman, not a problem. Look for opportunities to get closer to a woman in your life, be it a mother, sister, lover or wife. Try looking through her eyes to help you get in touch with your feminine side and allow her spirit and compassion to influence some upcoming decisions. Beautiful. So, um, yeah, spirit is asking you to, to get in touch with your feminine side. Be gentle, nurturing and loving, kind and compassionate when dealing um, with your daily life. Um, but at the same time, the card is also saying that the masculine is... Um, moving towards the feminine so there's a sense of longing between the two of them if you look at the two cards you know it's this energy they're both turned towards each other um, and you know you both have your hands on your heart um, feeling an emptiness like a pain in your chest almost so the feminine is kind of closing off but yet the masculine is moving towards so um, you will always be connected no matter what is happening in the 3d world um, so yeah, I hope this resonated. Much love, guys. Peace.